Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today here at Two Wheel Thunder TV. This cold, chilly day, we're doing something a little bit different. Of course, we're always doing something a little bit different here at Two Wheel Thunder. But what we're doing today, is we're in the great Commonwealth of Kentucky, a state that's a gorgeous state, except today it's cold as Hades out here. But outside of that, this is the state that's contributed to 43 Medal of Honor recipients to our great country. This is the state that's got over 300,000 veterans living here. This is also the state that's got over 75,000 plus motorcycle riders here with 150,000 miles of gorgeous highway and byways to ride in. And if you're not riding in this area, you're missing some great country to ride in. And you may say, why is old Texas boy standing up here in Kentucky on an old cold day like this? Well, one of the things that we've learned here at Two Wheel Thunder TV is that veterans and bikers like two things, and that's their freedom, and they don't like their government encroaching on their rights and their abilities to do things. And joining me today is a man that wants to try to change that, a man running for the state office of governor, Matt Bevins. Appreciate you joining us. Jimmy, great to be with you, it really is. Appreciate you joining us today. I know it's a little chilly. I know you just came from a Chamber uh, of Commerce Bureau meeting. Tell us, now, as you're gonna be governor, how do you propose to change some of this bureaucracy and all this rules and regulations that came to come in and limit what the average person can do? You're a businessman. I am. This is part of what drew me to this race. We, we have a need, not only in Kentucky, but frankly in every state around the country, we need governors that will lead by example. And as a former military veteran, I was a former Army officer for a number of years on active duty, if there's anything I learned in the, in the military that has applied well in the civilian sector, it is that you lead by example. That's correct. And we need people who have the intestinal fortitude to not only speak about what they'll do for vets, but have been there, walked in those shoes, but then will lead in a similar fashion. And we need in Kentucky a strong governor, one who understands the power of the sovereignty of a state who understands the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, who understands that the powers not enumerated or given to the federal government are the responsibility of the state and of the people. And we're the people, your viewers, you are the people. As veterans and non-veterans alike, as bikers and non-bikers alike, you are the people, it is our government. And I share with you the comments that you spoke to. I mean, we are a nation that was conceived in liberty. And in, if we lose the, the appreciation for the sacrifices that were made, and we're surrounded here by remembrances of the sacrifices that have been made. The, the sacrifices that were made to give us the individual liberties, I feel that we're taking for granted. I really do. Well, that's true, and a lot of vets feel like they've just been forgotten. I mean, they're Korean vets. that They even call them the forgotten yeah. of the war. And a lot of vets feel unappreciated. I know a lot of Vietnam vets do. But we really appreciate what our people have done now, the Patriot Guard riders and all those guys who get together and welcome all those who are coming back and, and give them that hero's welcome that they deserve. But getting to the actual local government and the, being the governor of the state, you have a unique responsibility. And you, you said lead by example. As the bills come to your office, for your voice and your signature, and you have the opportunity to voice your opinion up to Washington, a governor has a lot of authority to say things. Absolutely. Are you going to be willing to stand up to those boys and girls in Washington and speak what is on your heart and mind? No question about it. It's interesting. As I, I mean, I look at this poem behind us, a soldier's poem. It talks about, it says, I, I went where others feared to go. I did what others failed to do. We need a governor in this state and in every state that will do what others have failed to do. There are too many people who run for political office that are trying to be liked, that are trying to be popular, that are saying the right things, that are kissing all the right backsides and all the right rings. This is not how our nation was built. Our nation wasn't built by the kind of political cowardice that we see at every level of government in our country. I'm a guy that grew up below the poverty level in the country. I grew up in a large family and I had to make my own way. I was able to go to school. I paid my way through school. I got out. I went into the military. And I learned the value of what it is that made this nation great, and I'm grateful for that. I learned about work ethic, but I also learned about standing up for oneself. And I learned about the importance of being somebody who's true to the foundations of this nation and of the Christian principles that I was raised with. As a governor, I will absolutely stand up to Washington. There's no question about it. 
I will not. I will disregard those things that we are not legally required required to comply with. And whether it's the EPA or the Department of Transportation or the Department of Education or the fill in the blank of the alphabet soup, if there are unelected regulators passing down things to the citizens of Kentucky that we are not legally required to comply with, that fly in the face of our individual liberties, that fly in the face of the things that are in the economic benefit of this state, I will not enforce them. That is a fact. I will not do it. And if the federal government ch challenges me on that, these things will be adjudicated in court. That's the way they go. But guess what? As long as the Constitution is still the law of the land, as long as we are still a nation of laws, these things will continue to come down on our side. We will win. We just need the spine and the intestinal fortitude from our elected officials at every level, including as governor, that are willing to stand for the people. Because this is still in the America that I fought for, the America that so many of you have worn the uniform for. This is still a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I am somebody who, as governor, understands that. And the idea that it's been hijacked and is of and by and for a few, I think is a big mistake. One of the things I appreciate about what you've said is that you're going to stand up to Washington. By doing that, that, that indicates to me that you don't have all these political insider ties already. You're not a part of this establishment that's already this big bureaucracy, this leviathan that's up there that nobody can navigate through. You're willing to take that on, but you're not a part of that. You, you are correct. I mean, the, the fact is I'm never going to be confused for the inside guy. I'm not the chosen one. I haven't kissed all the right backsides and rings as I referred to earlier. I haven't done it, nor am I going to be a person who does that. This is not a nation that was built by that type of, of approach. It isn't. And if we are going to have the future that we want, we have got to start to elect men and women with spine enough to represent us. It's as simple as that. I am not the chosen inside guy. I'm a businessman. I'm an employer. I employ scores of people. I pay them millions of dollars a year in salaries and in benefits. And these taxes that are pumped back into the system I see being squandered time and again. I'm a veteran, as was noted. I'm a father as well. I'm married and have nine children. We had five children. We adopted four additional children. I'm not a guy that just blows smoke. I act. And when I see opportunity and when I see need, I get engaged. This is how I was raised. This is how I've operated my life. And this is how I'll be as the next governor of Kentucky. But I need the support of people in Kentucky and outside of Kentucky who think that these values matter, who still believe that this is the land of opportunity and want to keep that opportunity in the hand of individuals. I need support. People can learn more about this campaign. Go to mattbevin.com. It's M-A-T-T-B-E-V-I-N.com. I'd be grateful for any support people could give, but frankly, support your local candidates as well because it's critical that we get men and women the likes of That's which right. we're talking about that will truly represent us the people now we need to get them to do that there's a primary coming up uh, may may the 19th may the 19th which is right around the corner yeah less than two months from now so make sure that you're on that you're a part of that you've got it on your calendar your ipad your iphone or android or whatever it is devices you work off of and you get down to your local polling booth we'll put Matt's website down at the bottom of this clip somewhere. It'll be a hot link directly to his website. You don't need to go to us, go directly to him. You can find all the things he stands for. You can find his running mate there. We're going to interview her in just a few minutes Absolutely. too. Absolutely, and she's terrific. A wonderful lady, also a veteran, really cool. So we want to encourage you, get out. If you're from Kentucky, you're a, a good Kentucky person, good old Kentucky boy, as they say, the bluegrass state. Make sure that you find time. May what, 29th? May the 19th, actually. 19th. May the 19th, it's a Tuesday. We would appreciate any support that you give. Let me just close by saying this, if it's all right. Sure. I would simply say this. Many of you watching have already sacrificed for your nation. Some of you are continuing to do, to do so even as, as I'm speaking. How bad do you want it? We all talk about we want a better Kentucky. We all say we want a brighter future for our children and our grandchildren. We want a brighter promise for tomorrow in America. How badly do you want it? Do you want it as badly as the men and women whose names are listed on these monuments? The people who preceded us. The people who fell on the beaches and in the jungles around the world so that we could even sit here in freedom and have this conversation. Because if we don't want it that badly, it's not gonna happen. The reality is others sacrificed so we could have these freedoms, 
and it's incumbent upon us that we have to make sacrifices too. I ask you please for your support, but I ask you as well to support these issues no matter who this, the candidate is, because this is what made us great and it's what will keep us great into the future as well. Matt, thank you for joining us today here at Two Wheel Thunder. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, vote your convictions, get registered, be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Let's stop all the belly aching and complaining and do something about it. Get behind somebody that wants to make a change. Here's a gentleman and his running mate that's going to do just that. And we're going to hold him to it because we're going to come see him in the governor's Good. office and make sure that he does that. Thanks for joining us today.